hydrate. Neatest of nations, welcome to the Droopy Whiskey channel, uh, especially if you're new. Stoked to have you guys here. Today I'm launching, I'm st starting, I'm launching off, starting off, I'm headed off, out, onto, into a new journey, whatever. I'm, I'm starting a new series on this channel, specifically talking about what you should buy. I don't know how many times I get asked the question, if I'm headed to the liquor store, what should I buy? Especially among people who are new to bourbon. Totally understand. Like, looking at the bourbon shelf is a booger. It's hard to understand uh, as you look at the hundreds of options on the shelf. What should I buy? Unfortunately, it's not a short answer. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of good stuff out there. But price matters. Price matters uh, depending on what you see on the shelf because there's a lot of stuff I, sh I would tell you, you should buy but it really depends on uh, what the price tag is. So, so we're gonna take this distillery by distillery. And in some cases, we're gonna take it mash bill by mash bill. It's gonna be a lot of videos, but what I do guarantee is after you watch this series of what bourbon should I buy, you're gonna go to the store and you're gonna know what bourbon you should buy. That's gonna be a win. So the first episode naturally is a banger. I mean, they're all gonna be bangers, don't get me wrong, but this first one is a banger of bangers. We're talking about Buffalo Trace Distillery. It may not be easy. There's three mash bills plus a rye mash bill that's a little bit convoluted. So we're talking about four different mash bills and underneath those mash bills, we're talking about uh, like almost 20 products, give or take. So let's not waste any time, let's get into it. What bourbons from Buffalo Trace Distillery should you buy? And for how much? Well, first up, there's the mainstay, Buffalo Trace, which looks like this. I've done a whole video on Buffalo Trace, so you should know a little bit about it. Why is this box here? That was athletic. Anyway, Buffalo Trace. This is the standard release from Buffalo Trace Distillery. It's also from their first mash bill, their low rye, quote unquote, mash bill. And uh, should you buy this? Well, yeah, if you're looking for a low proof, easy to drink bourbon that's cost effective, max I'd pay for this bourbon is $30. In days future, might I pay up to 35 for it? Yeah, but it's actually not my favorite because it's so mellow. Very easy to drink, generally pretty, really, pretty solid, um, but I think you should pay about 25 for it. Max 30. Three years from now, if you're watching this video, you're probably gonna have to pay 35 for it. Unfortunately, a lot of the products from Buffalo Trace Distillery, including this very standard release, not the easiest to find. Um, that is the nature of things. They do allocate all of their products so you don't see them on the shelf all the time. In some states, you can find this on the shelf all the time, but not in Wisconsin. But I don't think you need to find it all the time. Whiskey number two from mash bill number one, Buffalo Trace, Eagle Rare. Should you buy this bourbon? Yes. This is a bourbon that I, I featured in my whiskeys you should be hunting right now. Like the ones I said you should go get because this is a 10 year old bourbon. It's only 90 proof, but it is kind of hard to find now because people wised up, got wise to the fact that this was really freaking good. And uh, it's MSRP is only 30 bucks. So should you buy it? Yeah. Should you buy it at 30? Yeah. Should you buy it at 40? Probably. I start to go eh, at 50, but it's still a 10 year old bourbon and there's just not much out there on the shelf at 10 years that rivals this. So I'm even him and hawing at 50. If I didn't have a backup at home, I would probably buy it at 50. The third bourbon from mash bill number one is E.H. Taylor small batch and or single barrel. I have the small batch here. Now the small batch, neither one of the small batch or the single barrel is age stated, meaning we have no idea how old it is. Um, the small batch MSRP is around $35. Normally you'll see it around 40 if the store is not jacking up the price. And uh, should you buy it? Yep, you should buy it at 35 or 40. Now we are starting to see it uh, like I said, get jacked up price-wise into the, like the $60 range in the retail environment. You know, I, I gotta be honest with you, I'll pick Eagle Rare over E.H. Taylor Small Batch. I like the profile better, even though this delivers a little bit more proof. Now the E.H. Taylor Single Barrel, 
has an MSRP. It looks very similar to this. Uh, just says single barrel here instead of small batch. Still 100 proof. Has an MSRP of like 60 or 70. And I'm gonna buy at that. Like because this a, a lot of the single barrels I've had have been killer. Soup's good. Very delicious. But unfortunately, the uh, the secondary value on the E.H. Taylor single barrels, it's like 150, sometimes more than that. Like I've seen these things go for 180 bucks, which is ridiculous. It's good, but it's not 180 dollars good. So I'm out. I'm out. Um, you know, I'd be hesitant to pay more than 80, um, just because I know that there are better whiskeys for less. Um, I'm definitely out north of 100. I'm just not going to drop that on the E.H. Taylor single barrel. There's also E.H. Taylor barrel proof, which is, I mean, it's reached legendary status. It's amazeballs. Um, you know, it rivals George T. Stagg, which is the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection annual release, one of them. Uh, but the one from Buffalo Trace Mash Bill number one, uh, the E.H. Taylor barrel proof. Taste wise, year over year, kind of goes back and forth between which is better, either that barrel proof re release, barrel strength, barrel proof release, or the George T. Stag. Now the barrel proof E.H. Taylor certainly has got to be like five years younger at least, depending on how old that George T. Stag release is each year. But I mean, age isn't everything. And barrel proof Buffalo Trace products, like Stag Jr., like George T. Stag. I mean, they're delicious. So, the E.H. Taylor, why would it be any different? It wouldn't be. So, I'm a buy up to probably $140, $150 given the current market. Now, granted, the MSRP is below a, uh, a Franklin, um, but nobody's selling it for that. And the secondary value on those bottles is $300, $400. So if you don't find one on the shelf, it's probably going to be difficult to get. Um, and it's such a unicorn these days, you know, spending it up to 150 off the, the shelf. You, you can do worse things with your money, put it that way. Oftentimes more rare are the E.H. Taylor limited releases, which uh, you may have heard of them. The four grain, which isn't mash bill number one, but there was 18 year marriage, which was 18 year old. E.H. Taylor at 100 proof. That was released last year. Of course, I didn't see any. Didn't expect to see any. Um, yeah, you should buy those too, generally, if you got lucky enough to find them. But most of the time, if you're a beginner watching this video, the only ones you really have to concern yourself with are the small batch or the single barrel. You're probably not going to find the single barrel. The small batch, definitely a buy if you can get it. Really under 50. But I, if you have an option between small batch and Eagle Rare, honestly, my recommendation is Eagle Rare. Although I'll tell you, that's the minority opinion. Going back to barrel proof Buffalo Trace products, let's talk about, well, let me put this away. Let's talk about Stag Jr. for a minute. The. Uh, perceived value of Stag Jr. has gone up astronomically over the last two years. This used to be generally accessible, like you could find it if you were looking for it when it was released each year for 60 or $70. About two years ago I passed on it for 80 That was dumb. I haven't seen it since. Um, and the lust after the horny Stag has has just I mean big big lust <laughs> and uh, the secondary value on these releases has gone from you know being able to trade for it in the $75 range to 150 you know we're talking about a eight year ish product probably six to eight years maybe nine going into the blend and it's delicious should you buy it yes 100% you should buy it particularly if you can find it at the MSR MSRP which is still 50 to 60. You probably cannot, or it's gonna to be tough. You're gonna to have to get lucky. Um, now I am still a buy on this one up to, you know, the Franklin. It's hard to spend more than a hundred bucks on this when you can get Elijah Craig barrel proof for like 70 still, but this is so good and it doesn't taste like Elijah Craig barrel proof. It is different. So I'll tell you all him and ha on this one up to 120 these days, probably. I don't like it, but I'm being honest. 
um, you know, you have to pick your price points. Uh, but if you do find this at MSRP, 60 bucks, buy it all day. Buy all of them, drink all of them, send me one. Also in match bill number one are a couple value, value products, lower shelf. Old Charter number eight, which used to be eight years old. That's an 80 proof Buffalo Trace product. Old Charter, different than Old Carter. Very, very different. Old Carter, not related to Buffalo Trace whatsoever. Old Charter is fine, it's 80 proof. I don't buy anything 80 proof because I don't really like anything 80 proof, except Scotch, different story. We're also now starting to see some innovation in under that Old Charter brand. There's the Old Charter Oak, and under that they're releasing like aging experiments. So smash bill number one juice going in a barrel, but all kinds of different barrels. I think they've done Mongolian Oak. Well, that's the one that comes to mind immediately. They've done five, I think, of these wood aging experiments under the Old Charter line that are apparently decent. You know, they're experiments, uh, nobody's really going after those because it was the most amazing juice ever, but they're highly collectible. So if you ever saw an old Charter Oak release, yeah, I would probably get one. You know, up to up to 100 probably because it's collectible. Um, but the old Charter everyday yellow label, old Charter number eight, probably not gonna give it a second look. If you like low proof bourbon, I mean, it's from Buffalo Trace. It's probably gonna be a pretty safe bet. Similar would be Benchmark. Benchmark is the other bottom shelf, 80 proof brand from Buffalo Trace. Hard to go wrong besides the 80 proof thing. Although Benchmark 2, they released a whole lineup of different Benchmark products from like, it was like Benchmark, Single Barrel. I don't know if they did a Bottled and Bond, but they did a full proof. But I didn't actually try any of those. They weren't very widely distributed. Um, and but they were definitely put on the shelf at budget-friendly amounts. I think the most I, I was aware of them being priced at was 60 bucks. They're long gone. They're probably being traded on the secondary market for much more than that. But when you do find chart, old charter yellow label or benchmark, just standard benchmark black on the shelf, you know they're $16, $20 bottles. Um, you shouldn't really pay more than that. Doing this first, what should I buy? video and focusing on Buffalo Trace is a little bit difficult because I could almost say buy everything, but there is that price problem. Like a lot of the products that I mentioned and the price ranges that I mentioned are important because you will find a lot of retailers jacking the price way above anything I mentioned. So you gotta be careful. And that becomes especially relevant when we get to the last bourbon from mash bill number one, which I already mentioned, and that's George T. Stagg, the annual barrel proof, super aged, bourbon from Buffalo Trace, that's this guy. Now the MSRP on this is $100. You're almost never gonna find it at that. I mean, some store owners are great. Some raffles, great. You can still get this at 100 bucks, but you have to get lucky. I mean, and, and the reality is, is that a lot of store owners are raising the price on this $500, $600, $700, $800 a bottle because it's so highly sought after. Can't really blame them because people will pay it. I mean, you got deep pockets, you like bourbon. I mean, I can think of some other things I'd recommend you spend your money on, but I mean, you do you, I guess. <laughs> um, so if you ever had a shot at George C. Stagg, is it a buy at MSRP? Of course. Like, this is one of the best bourbons that you can get. So at $100, get it. At $200, yeah, get it. At $300, maybe consider it, because you, you'll probably never have a shot at it again uh, for less than that. It'll be very hard these days to get one of these unless you have an in with a liquor store. It's just not really available. Um, but start to think twice when you see those $600, $700 things. Um, generally, if you or to try and acquire one through trade on the secondary market, you're looking at a $400 trade value right after it comes out. You know, a few years later, you know, the, the value on the vintages of George C. Stag go up dramatically. So secondary value on some of the older Stags is thousands. Okay, so for the sake of time, we're gonna call this video, What Bourbon Do I Buy? Buffalo Trace Part One. So we're gonna have to do Buffalo Trace part two. To round out part one, let's talk about Rise from Buffalo Trace. There's four of them. 
Sazerac Rye, which is Baby Saz. It's six ish years old and I like it, but you should try it before you buy it. MSRP is about $30 and I'm, I, when I crave it, I get one. So I've been through a few bottles and I enjoy it. I don't carry a backup with me because if I never had it again, it wouldn't kill me. But it's good at 30. You shouldn't spend more than that. I've seen some places charge 60 or 70 for it. It's not a 60 or 70 dollar bottle. I'm actually out above MSRP because while I like it and periodically I'll go for that, I'm just not gonna spend more than MSRP for it. It's not worth it to me. I'll get a different rye. Earlier in this episode, we talked about E.H. Taylor. There's also an E.H. Taylor rye. This looks exactly the same as the bourbon, except it says rye on there. So, hunter proof rye. Now, I've heard some different rumors, which I haven't been able to verify, actually, about the origin of this, whether it's the Buffalo Trace rye mash bill that Sazerac rye is made from, or is it maybe a Barton rye that is sourced? Um, it may be both. Like, it may have used to have been Barton, now it's Sazerac. I would imagine it's probably the Sazerac rye mash bill, but. I've heard mixed reports, and unfortunately, Buffalo Trace doesn't come out and say, here's how we make our stuff with 100% transparency. If you have been uh, illumined, illuminated, if you happen to know where this came from, tell me. I would love for you to tell me exactly where it came from. It says distilled, aged, and bottled by Old Fashioned Copper Distillery, Frankfort, Kentucky, which the OFC distillery was at one time a name for the Buffalo Trace Distillery. So if they're being 100% transparent with this distilled, aged, and bottled by this company in Frankfort, Kentucky, then we can maybe assume that it's Sazerac Rye. Probably a little bit older, a little bit higher proof. Uh, MSRP on this used to be 60 or 70. I mean, that's still the MSRP, but it's more likely if you wanna try and get it at re on a retail shelf now, it's about 90 or 100. Um, you know, I bought this one at 90, full transparency, but I hemmed and hawed about it. I just hadn't seen it, I haven't seen it since, so I'm in at 90, I'm out uh, north of that, but I'm in all day at 60 or 70, which I used to be able to find it for a few years ago. The two other rides are super limited. Sazerac 18, that's part of the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection, comes in a bottle like this. That's 18 year old, 90 proof rye, uh, which used to be legendary. Like the Sazerac rise of the, the like 2000 teens, early 2000 teens, was a batch that they had tanked and they were releasing some of that every year and it's supposed to be unbelievable. Have I had it? No, it, because the value on that is through the roof. The MSRP on the Sazerac 18 releases now matches George C. Stack. It's a hundred bucks but you're not gonna find it for that. The last few years, the reputation of Saz 18 has been less stellar. Although apparently the 2020 release was pretty good. It's a Buffalo Trace Antique Collection bottle. I'm again gonna be in up to probably 300. Then I'm probably gonna go, eh, I don't know. Especially because Sazerac 18 reputation is doesn't match what I wouldn't hope for out of a $300 bottle of whiskey. Uh, that said, the secondary value is still north of $500, so. The final rye is basically Baby Saz, Baby Saz's daddy. So Sazerac rye, six, seven year old rye, but highly, highly selected. Like they, like they filter through the barrels to get the best ones. And then they bottle that sucker cast strength. They call that Thomas H. Handy Sazerac rye. And that's, uh, that year after year tends to be pretty good. I was able to taste that once, absolutely loved it. I was given a sample, enjoyed it immensely. Uh, same rule applies here on this Buffalo Trace Antique Collection bottle. Um, in up to three, 300, then I'm having second thoughts. Would love to find it for 100. And there's actually one other bottle that I forgot from mash bill number one. That is the other Buffalo Trace Antique Collection mash bill number one bourbon that sits alongside George T. Stagg. That's Eagle Rare, 17 year old. Was released for a long time at 90 proof, but then the last two years has been released at 101 proof, hearkening back to the days that Eagle Rare was made at Old Prentice Distillery, now Four Roses, which was Eagle Rare 10 year old 101. 
So you can get Eagle Rare at 101 proof, but it's the 17 year old version and it's like the hardest to find of all the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection releases, Eagle Rare 17. I'd love to have that one. Of course I'm in at 100. This one I'm probably in up to 400 because it's so dang hard to find, but I don't really hope to find it. All right, that's part one. Those are whiskeys that you should be looking for from Buffalo Trace Distillery and the prices you should expect to pay. I mean, again, this is budget relative, so I'm an enthusiast and a collector. Like, I'm not gonna buy some, like, Eagle Rare every time I see it. I'm not buying Buffalo Trace every time I see it. But if I were ever see these BTAC Buffalo Trace Antique Collection releases, I'm telling you what I would pay them. Pay for them. So now you know. Next time, we're gonna do Buffalo Trace Distillery Part 2. We're gonna talk about their weeded mash bill, hashtag Weller, and we're gonna talk about uh, ride mash bill number two, which is a lot, a lot, a lot of single barrel products, and it gets pretty dang confusing. Nation, I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope, I hope you find it helpful. Like this is really, I'm, I'm doing this series of videos to try and help like my dad, who likes bourbon, but it just doesn't spend the time that I spend, which is probably a good thing, learning about what's out there and what's a good value and what's hard to find and all that stuff. So if you're just getting into it, you wanna know more, you don't wanna make a bad decision in buying, that's what this is about. And this is totally subjective, it's my opinion, so that kind of is what it is. If you want more content, subscribe to the channel. That would be awesome. Also, you know, like this video if you like this video, that's helpful for me. But subscribing gets you more content like this, more of my lessons learned. If you wanna get even geekier when it comes to bourbon, you should tune into this channel on Thursday nights at eight o'clock, most Thursday nights, where we go live, talk with other enthusiasts. I hang out with Brian, uh, my co-host at the Entry Proof Podcast. So Thursday nights, we're live streaming on YouTube, tasting whiskeys, talking about what's happening in the industry, always a good time. Also, I just mentioned the Entry Proof Podcast. Go down in the show notes below, click on that link for entryproofpodcast.com. That's my podcast that I co-host with Brian Beike at Abandoned Bourbon. That's just another great source of whiskey content for you when you can't watch. Also, check me out on Instagram, at Drew P. Whiskey. I'll go live sometimes, drop a tasting on there, take some dank photos, post them so you can go, ooh, look, pretty bourbon. Hopefully that's worth a follow. All right, y'all, we'll catch you on the flippity flop. Stay healthy, stay safe, and remember to... Keep it neat.